Reflections in a Broken Mirror. Lisa was a young girl who lived in a small town. She loved to play outside with her friends. They played games like tag, hide and seek, and hopscotch. Lisa's home was next to a park, so she went there every day. One day, after playing in the park, Lisa found a small mirror on the ground. It was broken. There were many small pieces. Lisa thought the mirror was beautiful. She saw many reflections in each small piece. Lisa picked up the biggest piece of the mirror. In it, she saw her face but it looked different. It was funny. One eye was big, and the other was small. Her nose was long and thin. She laughed. Then, she showed the mirror piece to her friends. They also laughed. Each friend looked into the mirror piece. Every face was funny. Tom, Lisa's best friend, had an idea. Let's make a game, he said. We can guess whose face is in the mirror. All the children liked this idea. They sat in a circle. One child held the mirror piece and looked at another child. The others guessed who it was. It was hard but fun. Lisa put the mirror pieces in a box. Every day, she and her friends played the mirror game. They laughed a lot. The broken mirror made them happy. One day, Lisa's mother saw the mirror pieces. Oh no. This is dangerous. You can get hurt, she said. Lisa was sad. She liked the mirror game. But Lisa's mother had an idea. She took a big paper and glue. She glued the mirror pieces on the paper. Now, it was a beautiful picture. The picture had many small mirrors. Everyone's face was in it. Lisa put the picture on her wall. Every day, she looked at it and remembered the fun times with her friends. The broken mirror was now safe and beautiful. The Enchanted Tapestry Emily was a young girl who lived in a tiny village. Every morning, she would wake up early and help her mother with the house chores. Their house was small, but it was filled with love. In their living room, there was a big wall that was empty. Emily always thought that the wall looked sad. She wanted to put something beautiful on it. One day, while Emily was walking through the village market, she saw an old woman selling tapestries. They were colorful and had beautiful pictures on them. Birds, flowers, trees, and many more. Emily stopped to look at them. Hello, young lady, said the old woman with a smile. Do you like my tapestries? Yes, Emily replied. They are very beautiful. The old woman pointed to a special tapestry. It had a picture of a big tree with golden leaves. There were animals around the tree. They looked happy. This tapestry is enchanted, said the old woman. When you look at it, you will always feel happy. Emily loved the tapestry. She bought it with the little money she had saved. She ran home to show her mother. Her mother was surprised. Oh, Emily, this is beautiful, she said. They hung the tapestry on the big wall in the living room. Now, the wall didn't look sad anymore. Every day, when Emily felt sad or tired, she would sit in front of the tapestry. She looked at the golden tree and the happy animals. She felt peaceful and happy. It was like magic. Her friends in the village came to see the enchanted tapestry. They all sat in front of it and told stories. The tapestry brought joy to everyone who saw it. One day, a big storm came to the village. It was very strong. The houses shook, and the trees fell down. 
But Emily's house was safe. The tapestry glowed brightly. It protected the house. The next morning, the villagers saw that only Emily's house was not damaged. They were amazed. They believed it was the magic of the enchanted tapestry. The old woman who sold the tapestry heard the story. She came to Emily's house and smiled. I told you it was enchanted, she said. From that day, Emily and her mother were very thankful for the tapestry. They realized that sometimes, magic can be found in simple things. Emily's house became a place of happiness and love. All thanks to the enchanted tapestry. Chronicles of the Fallen Star In a land where the night was as bright as day, there was a village named Lumina. Lumina was no ordinary village. It had a secret. The light during the night came from a single star, which was brighter than any other. The villagers called it the Star of Lumina. Every child in Lumina was told the tale of the Star of Lumina. It was said that the star fell from the sky many years ago, and it blessed the village with its endless light. Lucas, a curious young boy, loved this story. Every night, he would gaze at the star and wonder about its magic. One evening, as Lucas was watching the star, he noticed it twinkling in a way it had never done before. Then, it slowly began to descend. Lucas was filled with excitement and fear. He ran to the village's center, shouting, The star, the star is falling. The villagers gathered around, and they watched in awe as the star came closer to the ground. The star landed in a nearby forest. Lucas, with a group of villagers, decided to go and find it. They walked for hours, and finally, they found the fallen star. It was beautiful, glowing softly, and was warm to the touch. Suddenly, the star began to change its form, and a figure emerged from it. It was a woman, made entirely of starlight. The villagers were in shock. I am Lyria, she said. I am the spirit of the star of Lumina. I have come to thank you. Lucas, brave as always, asked, thank us? For what? Lyria smiled. For years, your village has looked after my star, telling tales and singing songs about it. I am here to give back. For the next few days, Lyria stayed in Lumina. She healed the sick, played with the children, and told stories of the cosmos. The villagers learned that the universe was filled with wonder. As days turned into nights, it was time for Lyria to leave. I must go back to the sky, she said. But I leave you with a gift. She touched the ground, and from it sprouted glowing flowers. These are star flowers. They will keep Lumina bright, even without the star. Lucas was sad to see her go. Will we ever see you again? He asked. Lyria nodded. Every time you look at the night sky. Know that I am there, watching over you. With that, Lyria transformed back into the star, and shot up into the sky, leaving the village with the light of the star flowers. And so, Lumina remained a place of light and hope. And whenever a child asked about the brightness of the night, they were told the chronicles of the fallen star and the spirit named Lyria. And as for Lucas, he often sat under the star flowers, gazing up at the sky, knowing that somewhere up there, Lyria was looking back down at him. And in Lumina, life danced on under the light of stars and flowers. Dance of the Moonlit Veil
Amara lived in the coastal town of Luno, where the moon's glow was said to have mystical powers. Every month, on the night of the full moon, the town would come alive with the sound of music, laughter, and the delicate rustling of veils. Luno had a tradition, the moonlit dance. Only on the night of the full moon, young women wearing shimmering veils would dance on the shores, their feet kissing the wet sand, their bodies swaying to the gentle rhythm of the waves. Amara, with her twinkling eyes and an agile grace, had always dreamt of leading the moonlit dance. But there was a problem. The lead dancer's veil was said to be gifted by the moon itself, and no one knew where it was. One evening, as Amara sat by the beach, an old woman approached her. Her skin had the wrinkles of time, and her eyes held a depth of mysteries. You seek the moonlit veil? She whispered. Amara nodded, her heart beating fast. More than anything, she replied. The old woman, with a secretive smile, handed her a small silver box. Open this only under the moon's light, she instructed. That night, as the silver orb in the sky reached its peak, Amara cautiously opened the box. To her wonder, it held a veil that shimmered and glowed with an ethereal light. It was the moonlit veil. With the veil wrapped around her, Amara joined the dancers on the shore. The moon's rays touched the veil, making it shine even brighter. As she danced, it felt like the universe was in harmony with her. The waves, the wind, the sand, all danced along. People from Luno watched in awe. The dance, they felt, was not just a tradition, it was magic in motion. The night seemed to stretch, not wanting the dance to end. As dawn approached, the dance slowed. Amara, with the moonlit veil still wrapped around her, stood facing the sea. She felt a gentle tug. Looking down, she saw the veil slowly drifting towards the sea, floating like a gentle wave. Going back to where it came from, Amara realized that the veil was never hers to keep. It was a gift, just for that night. With a grateful heart, she watched as the veil merged with the sea. The sun began to rise, casting its golden hue over Luno. People, with sleep in their eyes but joy in their hearts, started heading back to their homes. The moonlit dance was a memory now, but its magic would stay forever. And every time someone spoke of that night, they remembered the girl with the shimmering veil, whose dance was like a dream. In Luno, the night was not just a time of darkness. It was a time of magic, mystery, and the dance of the moonlit veil.